This is the brand new Canon EOS R6 Mark II. Now when Canon dropped this off for us yesterday, we thought it's a great opportunity to go to our friends, the Armory Boxing Club in Woodstock, to shoot some high speed photos, some low light shots, and some crispy slow-mo videos, and give our full preview for you guys. The R6 Mark I was actually released only two years ago. Now generally with pro cameras, especially full frame bodies, they have a lifespan of three to four years. So this is quite interesting that Canon has already launched a new model in only two years. Now this gives Canon the perfect opportunity to look at the version one and kind of improve on it. And as we know, the R6 I was a top hit. It was probably one of our best selling models, especially for guys needing a lot of high speed photography. So in this video, we're gonna focus more on what is the key differences of the version two to the version one. Now, first up, we're gonna focus more on the photographic specs of this model. And the first big change is the sensor. It's a brand new 24 megapixel sensor on this model. However, it is still shooting on the Digic X processor. Now, you might be thinking because it's shooting with more megapixels and the same sensor, it's gonna be slower. And this is the cool thing about this camera. It's not, it's much faster. This guy can shoot up to 40 frames per second in electronic mode. That's basically double the R6 Mark I. Now, in your mechanical shutter mode, you still be shooting at 12 frames per second. Now, 40 frames per second at 24 megapixels is a lot of data. Now, if you're using the correct cards, you can get about 190 JPEGs um, in the buffer. And then on RAW, it's about 75. Now, the frame rate you can actually reduce if you're not wanting to shoot at 40 frames because when we were shooting today in the boxing gym, it's crazy. Like 40 frames is like basically like a video. Now, addition to jamming in more megapixels and faster frame rate on this model, somehow Canon has sprinkled magic dust on this processor and jammed more autofocus technology into it. Now, it's still using the same dual pixel AF version 2 However, it has additional algorithms. The biggest add-on is gonna be the option of tracking horses. You still have the option for human face and eye, cats and dogs, wildlife as well, but the biggest and the nicest feature that we all love on Canon is the bird tracking, because we all know that's great. The Canon R6 Mark I was the best seller, especially for guys doing wildlife, bird, or sports photography. The biggest gap they kind of missed was sort of the semi-pro to pro video guys. And that's where the R6 Mark II is definitely filling the gap. They finally made a system that is a perfect hybrid for both stills and video. And again, somehow they got more juice out of this DGX processor, and I have no idea how they've done this, but the specs on the video on this is pretty decent. You've got 4K 60, however there is a no crop on the 4K 60. You've got Full HD at 180 frames per second, which is quite crazy, that is a fairly new spec in the market. In these modes, you can select between 8-bit 420, or 10-bit 422. Now quite interesting with this is what the R6 Mark II can output via the HDMI. Now if you plug a Ninja V Plus onto this, you can go 6K 60 frames per second, which is something that's kind of unheard of of a camera in this sort of market. Now also you will have the very fancy Canon C-Log3, which Matt, our videographer, really loves. He says it's one of the best log profiles that he digs. 
Quite interestingly, Canon has removed the 29 record limit that was on the Mark I. Now the Mark II will record roughly up to six hours of video continuously, depending on your battery, memory card, and also room temperature. Now on today's shoot, we have not once gotten any overheat warnings, and we were shooting in 4K 60 and also in the Full HD 180. Now this is making the R6 a really viable option for someone that wants to do professional cinema or someone that needs a B cam for their professional cinema body. Next up, we're gonna talk about some of the ergonomic differences. Now pretty much identical, there is some small minor changes. In terms of the outputs and memory cards, it is identical to the Mark I. Now the biggest change is gonna be this new dedicated video and photo dial. Now that's great for someone that wants to be a hybrid shooter because it keeps your photo and video settings completely separate. Also, they've added the new hot shoe, the multi hot shoe from Canon. So this will allow you to add sort of a Tascam XLR adapter, which will allow you to have two XLR inputs. That's great again for the video shooters out there. You still have the same flippy screen. You still have the Canon LPE 6NH battery. However, there's a difference. So somehow again, with Canon's sort of magic dust, they've improved the battery life of this. Now we haven't properly tested it out in the video mode, but on the photo modes, you can expect almost 100 shots extra on this battery. So we haven't been shooting with the R6 Mark II for too long, uh, only a couple of hours to be quite honest with you. And I'm super impressed. The image quality is great. They've bumped up the megapixels. The autofocus technology in these cameras are so good. The face tracking on this is phenomenal. We've shot some shots in the gym and it just tracks the face. Doesn't matter if there's a bag in the way or the ropes are in the way, it just knows that the human being is right there. In terms of the video performance, this is great. This is probably one of the best hybrids in the market at the moment for this sort of price range. And even though it's only been two years since the original R6 has come out, it's great to see that Canon has gone back to the drawing board and just beefed up all the specs and bring out this Mark II. It's gonna be probably one of the best hybrids on the market.